Hello and welcome to Crushing Comics. I'm your host, Peter, and this is Haul Around the World, where I open up a haul, I've got it right off camera here, of brand new collected editions from the United States shipped here to my home in Wellington, New Zealand. If you hear some banging and clanging, I just had to peek out the window, and the neighbors have taken the wall off of their house. Uh, and so it just looks like a like a diorama that like a doll's house that we're just looking into. So uh, I don't know what that entailed. I wasn't here for the taking off part, but now I suppose they're trying to put some new form of wall back on. So if you hear a lot of banging, that's what it is. Uh, I've got a package from our good friends at In Stock Trades here, and I'm very dressed up for the occasion, as you can see, because this package, as I've just been reminded as I'm opening it, contains perhaps my most wanted omnibus of all time, uh, knowing of course that all these X-Men omnibuses already exist. For a while my most wanted one of all time was probably like Uncanny X-Men by Jim Lee and Chris Claremont or something like that, but this has my number one. I'm gonna try to sneak it off camera so you can't see it and we'll talk about the other things first. Okay, uh, let's see what's in here, shall we? Uh-oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Ari's took a dive, okay. Here we go. Wow, there's a lot of things in this order. So this first one, you've seen me pull out a couple before, and this is called the Olympian series. It's from First Second, which is an awesome publisher that mostly does graphic novels that are a little bit, I won't say all ages, but work for some younger readers. And this series by George O'Connor is fantastic. It takes each Olympian god or figure and um, breaks them down with two or three stories that best illustrate them and uh, what their mythology is about. So each one is about three issues long. It's about 60 or 66 pages. Now, I do feel like this is volume 11, and it's Hephaest Hephaestus. And I feel like we're really digging now. So the, the volumes previous were Zeus, Athena, Hera, Hades, Poseidon, Aphrodite, Ares, Apollo, Artemis, and Hermes. So um, I, I, I guess we're really digging for the slightly more obscure and interesting gods at this point. Of them all, if you had to try one, I liked Zeus because Zeus um, explained Zeus well and nodded to how incredibly kind of rapey he is as a god, but also dialed it down so that you could share it with kids. But the Ares one actually was quite clever and I really enjoyed it. Okay, let's see what else is in here. Uh, oh, okay, so this is Neil Gaiman's Stardust. Stardust, uh, as many Neil Gaiman's uh, works are, started out as one thing, became another thing, and then was another thing entirely. And I forget actually which one came first. Was it a... Yeah, I think this actually might have been the original, now that I'm thinking about it. So it's Neil Gaiman with Charles Vess, and it's kind of just an illustro... Oh, you're going to have a hard time seeing that. It's kind of illustrated prose. Let's let the camera rebalance. So it's not a fully illustrated graphic novel. It's more like an illustrated novel. Now there's also a straight-up novel of Stardust, and there's also a very charming movie of Stardust. Uh, and so I felt I have both of those things. I felt like I had to complete the collection. Stardust, if you've never read it, it's a very charming, much more light-hearted than a lot of Gaiman's other stuff, like Neverwhere, which is very dark, although it's probably my favorite. Uh, maybe in the same lightheartedness of Good Omens, but not as serious with the biblical topic. Basically, this uh, young boy leaves his village to try to find something to prove his love to the woman he's been quite unsuccessfully suiting, and he says he's going to catch a fallen star. The only thing is when a, fall, a star falls from the sky, uh, it actually turns into a person. Meanwhile, there is a line of potential future kings who are all battling it out for supremacy and primacy to see who will be the king, and they think who, and they're doing a bad job of it, and whoever gets the star first will get to become the king. And so these two, you know, competing uh, priorities intersect, actually with the third one, which in the movie is very entertaining because it includes Mel, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, one of my favorite actresses. So, very fun movie. Not quite kid appropriate because there's some body aspects to it, um, but I still think it's a really fun one to watch. Probably teen, young, young teen appropriate. Oh, here's an epic collection that I can already tell you I'm excited for. It is Excalibur Epic Volume 3 Girl School from Heck. And here's why I'm excited for it. This collects previously uncollected Excalibur issues. 
Why? Because it collects past the end of Chris Claremont's run on the title, right up to the issue directly before Alan Davis turn takes over as both the writer and the penciler with issue 42 for what is actually, for my money, my favorite run of Excalibur. Um, it's not even my favorite one. Claremont was there with Davis. It's Davis by himself. So this crosses uh, issues 31 to 41, many of which have been uncollected previously. It also collects Excalibur Weird War 3, The Possession and Heir Apparent. Excalibur didn't really have annuals. Marvel did this with some of their comics in the late 80s and early 90s. They basically just um, delivered an annual-sized OGN, original graphic novel, uh, roughly on the schedule of an annual. Wolverine uh, frequently did that too. It was years before Wolverine had annuals. It also collects um, uh, their appearance in Sensational She-Hulk 26 and material from Marvel Comics presents number 75. I have this exact group of comments in a bag somewhere back there because I was going to bind it because I never thought they were going to fill in the gap between the end of the old school Excalibur classics um, and then the beginning of the uh, Alan Davis line of Excalibur trade paperbacks. How many will it take to cover all of Excalibur? It's got a 20, 125 issue series and currently it's only, there's a very, very small Gap, if at all, I'm trying to think. After Davis and before Ellis, might actually all be collected now, but it's never been collected past Ellis, who I think went off the title somewhere shortly after 100. Ben Robb writes the remainder, and we do not have that in any collected form. So if we keep up the 12 or 15 per epic, um, this starts at 41, so we've got like another uh, 80 some to cover, it could be six ish epics. Uh, but they've only been going sequentially through Excalibur. They have not been jumping around. So that will be interested to see how it resolves. Let's see what else is in here. Um, oh no, styrofoam all over my newly dry cleaned suits. This is what I get for getting all dressed up for you. Birthright by Joshua Williamson. Number seven is one of my favorite indie series. Williamson, of course, is killing it on Flash right now and has been since the middle of 2016. This series features uh, a young boy who is presumed kidnapped and he comes back as sort of a Conan the Barbarian type warrior, supposedly having aged all the way to that age in another land, uh, fending off the evil there. Except for, did he really fend it off? It's a fantastic sword and sorcery translated into our world series. I'm a huge fan. Uh, I'll be reading this very soon to keep up. This is a rare one where I could probably keep up with it digitally, but I just get so much punch from reading it in collected edition that I actually wait for the collected edition. Many other things now, I keep up singles. Uh, digitally. Oh my gosh, there's even even yet more. This is Mar <laughs> this is Marvel Knights Punisher Purgatory. So Punisher had his his first ongoing series, which is actually Punisher Volume Two, because his first volume was a mini series, and then that ended. And then he had a second brief series, also Punisher. So I guess it's Volume Three, and that was part of the over the edge line that Marvel had in the kind of mid '90s. It kind of fizzled and didn't really light a fires any fires. And so then Punisher went to a mini series model in the late '90s, and so he has a mini series where he dies or he's already dead. I can't remember if he's he already he's already dead or if he dies, and he comes back as like this avenging angel. And Punisher, I like when Punisher goes up against superheroes because I think it creates like an interesting dynamic. But I don't know if we need to make Punisher a literal angel back from beyond the grave. And that's what this collects. Maybe for the first time, I can't recall if it's been collected before. And also Wolverine Pub Punisher Revelation 1 through 4, which was the next sequential Punisher series. So, the, you know, I'm always happy to fill a gap, even if the material is so so. Speaking of Punisher, we also have a Punisher epic collection, epic volume number three, which is called Kingpin Rules. Uh, this collects Punisher 11 through 25. And, uh, you know, the, the, you've heard me talk about this before. The beef that I have with these Punisher collections is the same I have with the Spider-Man collections, which is the Punisher titles were so intertwined. There was also Punisher War Zone and Punisher War Journal. And I don't understand why you would do an epic collection and not collect them all together. We're not talking about like 
uh, Uncanny X-Men and X-Factor and New Mutants were, were doing their own independent things. These titles had a tightly interwoven continuity. Frequently, they would cross over with each other, not quite as tightly as Triangle era Superman, but pretty tightly. Uh, and the same goes for Amazing Spider-Man with Web of Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, and Adjectiveless Spider-Man. So I continue to get these Punishers very, very under-collected from the 90s. Very few collections uh, exist. And so it's definitely worth picking up for me, but I still find the approach kind of puzzling. And the final paperback in this order is a special direct market only paperback. Marvel never really does that. Um, and it's a paperback for Monica Rambeau as Captain Marvel. Now we know her as Spectrum. And she had a wonderful run, I guess in the early 80s, where she was in the Avengers. But she's never had her own title. She had two solo one-shots. Uh, but she was never Captain Marvel on her own for any length of run. But she did have a lot of one and twosy kind of stories around, including some stories in Marvel fanfare, one of which she um, intersects with Dracula, actually, because I read that recently digitally. And uh, this collects all those major stories. It's not a really thick one, but you can only get it in the direct market, which means it's probably going to be hard to track down once it is out of stock, because it, even though it has an ISBN uh, clearly, because it's a book and it was released in the United States. It's just not going to be something that Amazon ever had stock of. So if you like Monica Rambeau, she's one of my favorite Marvel characters, great stories uh, about her here, I would grab it now so that you didn't have to hunt it down later. Now we also have two hardcovers. I'm going to do one, and then the other one, which is the omnibus, I will tease what it is, and then we will talk together next episode, because guess what? I think the battery's about to run out. Priorities. So the first one is Luke Cage, Power Man, Marvel Masterworks, Volume 3. That means we've covered all of Luke Cage's solo material in Marvel Masterworks. After this one, which ends with issue 47, he begins to team up with Iron Fist. And even though the title isn't changed right away, it does become Power Man and Iron Fist. These are comics that have never been collected in color before, only in black and white essentials edition. And now I have a complete run of them up in the Masterworks shelf, which means they finally can be read. So here's what you'll need to turn in next time to see. It is an omnibus of Carol Danvers' Miss Marvel Years, something that I have been a fan of forever and I never thought would exist. So if you want to hear more about that omnibus and Captain Marvel, you need to tune in to the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Crushing Comics Hall Around the World, and I am your host, Peter, and I will see you next time. <laughs>